and welcome to this breakdown tutorial. We will begin by editing the first block's background. We'll proceed then to make adjustments on the columns. We'll merge them so that in the end we'll only have one column. There we will install our image app with a logo we have prepared for it. On the next section, we'll install a navigation app. We'll first edit its items, the text, and the links if you want. We can skip the links for now because we're only making a one-pager, so we're not going to create additional pages for this tutorial. There's one thing we need to do here though, and it is to delete all the sub-pages, so no top-level elements will open the drop-down. We'll only have top-level navigation items. We'll edit the textile, like colors, font size, family, and we'll be done with this block. Then we'll edit the next block's background. We're using an image as a background with some gradient. We're now installing a Super Banner app, which is an advanced app with lots of options and customizations and effects and more. We're going to customize the items with an image for each item and some text. We're trying to resemble the original site and we'll have to come back sometimes to edit the styling like margins and spacing. So we may be switching back and forth sometimes. We're changing fonts here and editing all the styling, titles and font size. We'll need to come back to the positioning of the title so it's not located on top. We'll need to do that later, so it's located on the left rather than on top. We're still styling the title and subheader. And here's where we set the content position to the left, so it shows right there. We're fine-tuning spacing here and there. Here in this part, the styling seems a bit awkward, but don't worry about it. We'll just update it as needed. There's a font we're using again and again in this site, which is Railway Font. You may want to keep an eye on it. For the next block, we're going to use a text app, which is going to serve as a title. We'll style it to modify its size, color, and whatever is needed. You can use the bulk style editor to edit several items at once. It's much better to use it at the end, so if something changes, you can edit all from one place. And all the relevant items get updated at the same time. Try to remember to use it when you're almost done, when you have installed everything. Here you can see that we're using another advanced app, which is the Projects app, and we'll proceed to edit the content for each item. 
We're not using subtitles, just the titles and the thumbnail image on the right of the CMS panel. Since we're trying to match as much as we can the original site, we're trying very specific things here. But you can enter as much information as you want or need on the description, and even images or videos. The description will be shown once a user clicks on any of your items from the list view. Then they will see that individual item. As you can see, we're progressing with the editing and the styling. It's coming together very much like the original. We're going to change the hover effect to blend and setting a blue tone for this. We're also changing the color of the links, both on normal state and hover. And there you have it. We'll continue with the bottom below this project's app. We'll edit its alignment and styling. We'll change its background and make a gradient. We're going to edit some other options like don't display slogan text so it only displays the title of the button. As I said before, we need to continuously fine-tune margin, spacing, and alignment. So all the time we're making these adjustments. Later on, we can save the styling as a dot profile, so we can recycle the styling done here and apply it later on to any other item, such as another button. Now we're going to change this block's background to a slightly shade of gray and duplicate the title of the previous block and reuse it and place it here. This duplication process is useful if you don't want to create something again from scratch. Since we're using the same styling, we only need to edit the text. We're going to split this section's columns so there's a total of four columns, and we'll be resizing them so they look like the original. We're going to duplicate the text and image on each of these columns, so we don't have to style them again. Once we paste the right text, we can just go ahead and duplicate it and drag and drop it to the next column. These columns are very similar. The only changes are the actual text and image. 
If you mess up, you can always come back and fix it and continue to duplicate. So as I said, we're styling the image and duplicating it from one column to the next. You could alternatively use the bulk style editor to edit at once many items at the same time. You can select which block or blocks you want to specifically affect and all the others will remain unchanged. We're going to proceed and install a text app here and paste the text from the original site and adjust the style font size. Below it we're going to install a social icons app with links to the social network profiles of the author. We're going to use a different theme for this app. Since we currently don't have a theme that resembles exactly the original, we'll want to choose one that is as close as possible. We're going to try out a few of them. Any of them are really sleek. You can choose whichever you want and they'll still look great. For the next block, we're duplicating the title from a previous one and adding some sections below it. There we'll install the text and photo block app. We're going to split the columns so we have two again and we will drag an image file from Windows Explorer and release it here. You can also do this from a finder window if you're using Mac OS. If you drag an image and drop it inside an image container, it will load right there and open the image container. It's handy for quickly uploading images without manually browsing and searching for them. So next, now that we have set the first item here, we'll continue to add new items to a total of three on the text and photo block app. We'll edit the styling of the text and size. We'll make some more style updates and then we're going to duplicate the sap and put it on the right column next to it. Since it retains all the styling we have already set, we'll only need to update the text and images. We'll just copy and paste the text and replace images with new ones. It's already styled. This is basically what the button 2x is for. When you have app versions that are very similar looking, all you need to do is edit the content, text or images. We'll also duplicate the text again, the title from a previous block, and drag it to the next. We need to update the background color for the block here. We'll duplicate the Super Banner app from a few blocks earlier and drop it here. We'll edit some stuff that we don't need to be showing here. 
We'll let it its settings and leave it as we need. Since we only need the text and no supporting image, we're using a gray image that blends into the background, so it fades without interfering with our text. We'll also need to reduce the spacing between the navigation and the actual text, so there isn't too much distance between them and they're closer. For this, we'll have to edit the spacing and margin here and there, so it matches better the original. We'll duplicate the title again for the next block. And we're going to install a form app here for users to make contact. We'll edit the labels and style and text. But there's something we're not going to be able to style the same as the original. This is the background for the specific fields. We currently can't change the colors. In the future, we'll have some additional styling options for the form. Keep an eye on the upcoming features page. Anyway, the site is looking very sleek. The form is looking very good now, and we're almost done. We're almost finished with the editing and decoration of the site. Now we're using the dot profile I mentioned a while ago. And we're going to apply it to the forms button here. For this section, we're merging the columns so we only have one. And we'll put the logo and copyright information below it. And that's basically it. We're making our general review. You'll probably need to make some spacing adjustments here and there. And when you're finished, you can finally publish it. This is what it looks like in the end. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this breakdown tutorial.